Welcome to Framework Fortune Crypto. I'm your host, Ben. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here on the intro. Hit the subscribe button, like button, all that. Let's dive into Mortal Judgment, the new expansion set for Gods Unchained. Now, we're going to be starting off at the top of the list with Deception. And I'm going to try to move through these at a decent pace. And this video will probably be put out in two or three different pieces. But let's go ahead and dive in. So we got a 3 mana, 3-2, three, Lethargy Mage, Guild Creature, Roar give minus 1 strength to each enemy creature. So that's kind of Light God-esque with the minus 1 strength. But that is pretty strong for three mana, especially with all these fast aggro decks in the meta right now. That might give you a chance and slow them down by reducing some of their damage. And that guild creature, guild's getting a lot of support, already a lot of support with the hollow from Divine Order. Now getting a whole plethora of guild cards. And the next one is a guild creature as well. 5 mana, 4-4, four, four, odds and ends dealer. Roar, give plus 3 strength to your creatures from another domain. Neutral creatures have no domain. So that is going to be creatures that you draw from all your different card draw abilities in Deception. Where you may be drawing cards from other domains. But as we move on through these cards, you will see this theme continue. And this actually gets some support. So that's going to be a buff to those cards that we'll see in just a bit. And actually, we can see right here on the next card, 2 mana, Spell, Appeal to Mercy, summon 2 random 1 mana war creatures, give plus 1 strength to them. You could play this and then combo it with Odds and Ends Dealer on the next turn, or maybe at 7 mana, play both of them and have a pretty strong board. Before it's kind of randomized where Deception is pulling from domains, they're getting some more domain specific pulling cards with just war creatures here. So we got another two mana spell here, Shake Down, draw a card. If you control the creature with the most strength, draw another card. Pretty easy with the board control in Deception, a lot of deception creatures have some high strength they tend to anyway and there's plenty of buff cards in deception to make this happen so basically two mana you could possibly be drawing two cards is that worth it i don't know we'll see how it gets used so next we got the goblin rally boss which we did cover in one of the early reveals having tempt fate when this creature attacks randomly, summon a one mana creature from another domain. So the Tempt Fate, you'll be looking to get some type of buff or double buff, depending on if you want to gamble or not. For three mana, you're getting quite a bit of value, even, even, even if it is a gamble with Tempt Fate. It could be a situational thing when you want to use it. So just the amount of value and it being a guild creature i think that's going to be seen in some guild deception decks for sure and then we got this three mana glade runner flank four three wild so pretty strong creature for a three mana and having flank built in could be a good option where if you're not looking to go the hidden route but you need a little flank to maybe finish somebody off because they put a some type of front line out you know maybe that's something where it could get used it's low enough mana now of course keep in mind this set will not be locked you know divine order is still open at the moment so we'll probably won't see the mortal judgment set locked for five six months as they balance it out so if you're gung-ho on some certain cards and you're wanting to spend money on them right out the gate keep in mind they could get nerfed and other cards could get buffed and with all these balances with the core refresher set divine order and this set going at the same time there's going to be a lot of balancing to do so expect a lot of price fluctuations in the gods unchained nft market so next we got another spell three mana bound by her will take control of an enemy creature with one strength or less 
that's pretty strong. <laughs> Cursed Obelisk is definitely a target for this. And it, and it doesn't say that the creature goes back to your opponent. You just take control of an enemy creature. So besides the Cursed Obelisk, I can think of the Marsh Walker, which is a pretty staple card in all of nature decks. There's a lot of things this can target. This is actually extremely, extremely strong. That may be a one of as a staple, possibly two of in every deception deck. Could get nerfed too. <laughs> For three mana, that just seems a little overpowered. But until it does, very strong. Next, we got the 444 Wandering Warrior. Roar, if you have no other friendly creatures, give plus two strength to this creature. 4-4 four, four with creatures on the field, basically blank, but if you have no creatures, you can play this and have that six attack, which could, you know, work with the shakedown where you draw a card and the creature with the most strength allows you to draw another card. You know, that's a combo that could possibly happen at six mana. Now, here's an interesting one. One mana, one one, shadow step, backstabber, echo, roar, still one strength from the strongest enemy creature, so he's actually stealing strength. That's going to give light decks a lot of headaches. And then it has echo, which means you're supposed to get a creature in your hand, similar, usually a little bit weaker version than the one you played with Echo. So I'm wondering if they put Echo on here to show that this is one of those cards you get from playing a stronger creature from Echo. So here's another one of those Light God S cards. Two mana, Blade Borrow, two one, Echo, Roar, give minus two strength to the enemy creature. Very strong for only two mana. Then we have a one 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 Aspect Juggler. Roar, summon a random one mana creature from another domain. So that's another one of those cards that can be buffed by the odds and ends dealer. We got a one mana spell, sneak a peek, look at the creatures in your opponent's hand, give minus two strength to one of them. That's really, really strong for one mana because you're going to get to see what creatures your opponent has in their hand so you can adjust your strategy and then take two strength away from one of them. Now all of those were the commons, so now we're getting into the rares. We can tell by the blue diamonds. We've got a two, two, one, rollicking lyricist, or rollicking list, <laughs> rollicking lyricist. I mean, you take me to Texas Roll House, I'll become a rollicking lyricist too. Anyway, this got Tempt Fate, so it's gonna get, you know, choice of the buffs, Roar, randomly summon a one mana creature from another domain. More creature summoning. And then we have a four mana, three one Ludian Thespian with Echo and Tempt Faith. Then Roar, give plus three strength to another one of your creatures. So we're getting some really strong buff and debuff cards. I think is going to open up quite a bit of different archetypes in Deception. And then another spell here. Three mana, give twin strike, and at the end of this turn, gain hidden to each friendly creature. So that's really strong. Those hidden decks, keeping their creatures hidden, and then giving them twin strike. You know, if you got a three or four things out, you could wipe somebody's board, possibly set up a combo with this to kill them in one turn or two. Now we got 444 Lady of Whispers. She has Roar, give plus one, plus one to this creature for each of your other creatures from other domains. So all that summoning from other domains, she can get buffed pretty strong off of that. And then this card I actually like quite a bit. Five mana, Armory Heist, give plus two strength to each of your creatures, give minus two strength to each enemy creature. So that can swing a game. Especially if you're running into a very fast aggro deck and give you a change of the board state for you. And of course, it's almost like Puss in Boots there. You got the cat with the cowboy hat on, you know, flying it right at these spirits. He don't care at all. And then we got a 444. You see a lot of this 444 pattern kind of repeating. 
But it has Echo, hidden for one turn. At the start of your turn, expend one mana. If you do, give your creatures plus one strength to the end of your turn. Every turn at the start, if you want to pay one more mana, you can buff all your creatures for that turn. For four mana, and this having Echo, going to be pulling another creature into your hand with some type of similar power, and then it being hidden, this is a whole lot of value in a four mana card, and easily can hold on its own with the four strength and four health. Now we got a one, two, one contract broker, Roar, summon a one, one rogue skulker. It attacks the weakest enemy creature, so a little board wipe for only one mana, and then this creature still stays on the board and could also help control the board or even push a little bit extra damage. And then we've got a 3 mana 2-2 two, two guild creature. That's a guild creature too. Uh, the contract broker. But the protective local has echo. And then roar give plus 1 plus 1 to the weakest creature. So that could be your enemy creature. So you do got to kind of play with the options that you have with all these buff and debuff cards. Now we've got the corrupting influence. 2 mana spell. Randomly summon two one mana creatures from another domain then tempt fate and apply the buff to both of those creatures For two mana you are going to get two creatures buffed Possibly even double buffed If you want to take that gamble next we got the beguiling blade We covered this one two mana one two echo and then roar this creature steals the strength from the strongest enemy creature Similar to the other card that we looked at, still in strength, you know, pretty strong, pretty strong card there. Now we're moving on into the epics in Deception, and there's not a whole lot here, but the Heroic Brawler, 5-5-5, five, five, five. at the end of your turn, if this creature has the most strength, give plus one, plus one to your weakest creature. So a lot of that spawning of those small Creatures from other domains and these creatures are here like the beguiling blade the contract broker things like that You'll be able to really chain some crazy combos of buffing in combats to win Possibly it could be some one turn kill type of decks come out of deception with these type of cards and this just continues that Three mana spell unlikely packed at three random one mana war creatures to your hand. So there's a lot of one mana war creatures and any of those could come in handy at any time. So getting three of them gives you odds of at least getting one that's going to really help you out when you need it. But if you get three of them that you really like that can really help you, well then that's a game swinging card. So I see why that's an epic, and that's definitely going to be used quite a bit. And we have a actual relic, 20-sided mace, which looks like the D&D 20-sided die. Nice big golden mace handle there, so that's a very interesting picture. I like that art. I like the idea they were going for. But 3 mana, 2-2, two, two, when you summon a creature from another domain, give it plus 1, plus 1. So that comboed with all these other summoning cards from other domains, this is another buff. And then we've got the legendaries, 3 pretty wild legendaries here. 3 mana, Alika, or Alika, Scarlet Thief, Echo, and then at the end of your turn, this creature steals 1 strength from the strongest creature and gives it to the weakest creature. One attack, four health. So at the end of every turn, you're going to be able to take one strength from your opponents and give it to your own weakest creature. Now, she's by herself. I'm assuming that is going to make her the weakest creature, and she would be buffing herself. A lot of versatility in that legendary. And now we've got Pietro, Mary Bandit, four mana, one, one. Roar randomly summon two one mana creatures from another domain and give hidden to each friendly creature. So if you got a whole board full of creatures that are all buffed up from all these different buff cards and summoning uh, summoning creatures, 
you drop him, your whole board is hidden, and then you could one turn kill somebody next combat. The final beast of the legendaries for deception Galatea, unyielding friend, five mana, three seven. Very nice health size for a five mana creature. Roar, add a random one mana war creature to your hand. When you play a creature from another domain, give it plus one, plus one. So just continuing the whole buffing shenanigans and all the suck creature summoning, especially war. Uh, that's going to be annoying to play against if you're a war deck when Deception is playing a whole bunch of war creatures that are getting buffed up against you. So a lot of interesting combos that you can clearly see through these new Deception cards. And it's going to make for some interesting combos with these other sets at the same time. So next we're going to get into one of my favorites, Death. This is war with the enemy Think that it was meant to be Living in a time where disease is on every screen I won't let them fester me I know most are festering Negativity is a plague for the mentally 